Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 27, which is the shorter simile of the elephant's footprint. Uh, now, in this discourse, basically, uh, the um, key element of this discourse is that one should not make any rash conclusions or rash judgments before arriving at the truth. One should proceed cautiously, right? Uh, and rather than, you know, making a kind of a rash assumption about whether one is a truly realized master or if the teaching is a kind of a liberating teaching or not, right? So, the context here is that Brahmin Janusani, who drove out from Savatthi, he saw the wanderer Pilotaka. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read the entire discourse to get your own insights, uh, right? So, he met wanderer Pilotaka. So, then he asked the wanderer Pilotaka, that do you think ascetic Gautama's, uh, or what do you think of ascetic Gautama's lucidity of wisdom? Do you think he's astute? So he's asking this question to him, that what do he, what does he think about Buddha's wisdom? So uh, Wanderer Pilotaka said that, uh, see, who am I to praise uh, Gautam Buddha, right? He is such a, such a, uh, 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 super, uh, so, such a person that whom am I, who am I to say anything? You really have to have have to be on the same level to judge his lucidity 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 of wisdom. So uh, so the Brahmin said that oh, okay then you you seem to be very uh, of a very lofty praise of him. So but then he said what are the reasons why you are so devoted to ascetic Gautama? So he inquired him further. So he said so the wander Pilutika gave like a example of four kind of a simile of elephant tracker. So he said, suppose there are a skilled bull elephant tracker were to enter a bull elephant wood. There he'd see a large elephant's footprint, long and broad. He would come to the conclusion, this must be a big bull elephant. In the same way, because I saw four footprints of the ascetic Gautama, I came to the conclusion, the blessed one is a fully awakened Buddha. The teaching is well explained. The Sangha is practicing well. Right? So what four? What four uh, elements did he see? What four footprints? So he said that first I saw that some clever, clever aristocrats who are very subtle, very accomplished in the doctrines and they think that they will demolish the convictions of others right through their intellect. So they came to know that Gautam Buddha was coming and they had their questions ready and they said that, okay, let him come, we will put our questions to him and then he will, let's see whether he will be able to answer or not. And then when Gautam Buddha come, came to him, he gave them such, such beautiful Dhamma talk they even forgot their own questions and they wanted to be accepted as disciples. So that is like the first kind of a uh, footprint. That was like a first kind of indicator of Buddha's uh, wisdom. Second is again for Brahmins, householders and uh, uh, ascetics. Or second, third, fourth uh, uh, is footprints are that when Brahmins came, they also became disciples. When householders came, they also became disciples. When ascetics, very, very renowned ascetics came, they also became disciples of him, right? So, so, so the, the wanderer said that when I saw this, these, these, these kind of four footprints of ascetic uh, Gautam, I came to the conclusion, the blessed one is a fully awakened Buddha. So, Brahmin Janusani, he got down from his chariot and he said, homage to the Buddha, homage to the perfected one, the perfectly enlightened Buddha. Then, then he said, okay, let's, let me go to the Buddha and let me have a discussion with him. So he went up to the Buddha and exchanged the greetings. And then when, when he had spoken to the Buddha, the Buddha said to him, Brahmin, the simile, uh, then he informed the Buddha of the discussion that he had with Pilotika. So Buddha said, Brahmin, the simile of the elephant's footprint is not yet completed. Uh, as to how it is completed, listen and apply your mind, I will speak. So then Buddha gave another kind of a, kind of a simile that when for suppose bull elephant tracker were to enter a bull elephant wood, they see a large elephant footprint, but they do not come to a conclusion just, just then because there can be another being, another uh, animal also. They keep following a track until they see a big foot, footprint. They, they, again, they do not, so there are third, third fourth time. So similar way, with what Buddha said that Brahmin, a realized one arises in this world, perfected, fully awakened Buddha, accomplished in knowledge and conduct, holy knower of the world, supreme guide for those who wish to train, teacher of gods and human. He realizes with his own insight, the world, with his god, Maras, Brahmas, 
this population with his ascetic and brahmins gods and humans and he makes it known to others he teaches dhamma that is good in the beginning good in the middle and the good in the end meaning and full and well phrased and reveals a, he, he reveals a spiritual practice that's entirely complete and pure then buddha said a householder hears that teaching or a householder's child or someone reborn in a good family they gain faith in the realized one and reflect that living in a house is cramped and dirty but life of one gone forth is wide open it's not easy for someone living at home to lead the spiritual life utterly full and pure like a polished shell why don't i shave off my hair and beard dressed in ochre robes and go forth from the lay life to homelessness after some time they give up give up a large or small fortune and a large or small family circle they shave off their head and beard dress in ochre robes and go forth from the lay life to homelessness so the buddha is basically reflecting that 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 first when a person realizes that this is the buddha this is the fully realized one and this is the teaching which is so complete and pure then they decide to leave their family life and go to the homelessness please don't please understand here that buddha is not advocating or pressing that one should leave the family life for this for a monk life no way he is saying that he has given separate rules separate advices guidances for people in the lay life but there are people who are very very keen and who are very very kind of focused that they want complete end to suffering and who decide that okay now it's time that you know my my family responsibilities have have reduced considerably and then i can move to homelessness so then in this basically uh, uh, remaining discourse buddha is talking about the various kind of uh, uh, monastic codes that one has to follow like they give up uh, they give up killing living creatures renouncing the rod and sword they are scrupulous and kind living for compassion for all beings give up stealing give up unchastity give up lying give up divisive speech you know all the five precepts you know then uh, then for monks there are more more than five precepts right they give up harsh speech they give up talking nonsense they avoid injuring plants and seeds they eat one part of the day they only eat one part of the day that actually we can also do i have started that and you know uh, have started observing the benefits from eating only one meal at the day in the in the afternoon and then no meal right so but then it, it is different for everyone so uh, so basically this code is for monastics that that they they avoid eating at night they avoid seeing shows of dancing singing music why because that excites the mind they it's a sensual stimulation so they avoid that they avoid beautifying and adorning themselves with garlands perfumes and makeup they avoid high and luxurious beds why high and luxurious beds because that can make them more lazy and more prone to sleep they avoid receiving gold and money raw grains raw meat women and girls male and female bond servants goat and sheep chicken pigs etc they refrain from bribery fraud cheating duplicity mutilation murder abduction so a lot of these things if you do even once in the monk order then you are totally permanently expelled like a penetrative sexual intercourse or a murder of another human being that is like permanent expulsion from the monk community right so then they are content with robes to look after the body and arms food to look after the belly wherever they go they set out only the only these three things they are like a bird wherever it flies wings are its only burden so then 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 buddha talks about certain other things like when they see a sight with their eyes they don't get caught up in the features and details very very important friends mindfulness of the eyes mindfulness of the sight so that we do not get caught up in the features if the faculty of sight were left unrestrained bad unskillful qualities can develop that's what the practice of mindfulness is being totally watchful so that uh, we do not lose ourselves in anything when they taste a flavor with their tongue when they feel a touch with their body when they know an idea with their mind they don't get caught up in the features and details if the faculty of mind were left unrestrained bad unskilled qualities would become overwhelming when they have this noble sense restraint they experience an unsullied bliss inside themselves then buddha says they act with situational awareness of when going out and coming back and looking ahead so mindfulness of movement mindfulness of walking sitting this is all explained very well in the uh, middle discourses 10 which is the discourse on the four foundations of mindfulness satipatthana which is the very very important discourse right so you can check that discourse also mn10 right this is all about the absorptions 
they give up the five impedances, the four absorptions. Then they so as a re result of this practice, they get the four absorptions, they get the three knowledges, right? That Buddha got, and they are freed from the def defilements, right? So this is basically the, uh, the 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 discourse. And the main main thing is that Buddha is saying that do not make rash kind of ideas or conclusions about the masters and the truth and you know go cautiously go optimistically the real truth of the teaching is when it achieves and ends you know achieves the goal which is in our case freedom from suffering but there's some level of definitely the confidence or the faith that is there in the master and the teaching that makes us keeps us working on towards the path right uh, so this is the 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 the, the my learning from this discourse do read the discourse and do share that what is your learning from this discourse in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya